Welcome back to Honey Hill, everyone. I am Samantha, if you are new here. And I wanna start this off by saying, I had no expectation of taking this long of a break um, from YouTube. And I just want to thank each and every one of you who have commented and sent me messages on um, Instagram and commented on these videos. And I, I'm getting at least one a day of you guys asking me to please come back to YouTube. When am I posting again? And I just feel so humbled by that, that, that people are still finding my little corner of YouTube, um, even when I have been so absent from this space. And my last video, I explained that I was dealing with some neck pain and I ended up finding out that I had or have three bulging discs in my neck. Um, and I'm, I'm a little bit young to have the amount of spinal um, uh, degradation, for lack of a better word, um, that, that I do. But I think that was for uh, a lot of reasons. Um, injury, uh, overuse, and I've been, I had been in physical therapy from like September through just this past month um, uh, and to the end of March. So I um, am doing loads better. I still have to be incredibly careful. So, um, you know, the workouts I was doing almost every day, plus gardening, plus some injuries that I had um, with some heavy tools and equipment in the garden, like my huge auger torqued me a few times. There were just things that happened and I think it just all built up to what it was. But that being said, I really couldn't garden very much in the fall. So there was so many bulbs that I actually couldn't plant and I was just trying to do, do my best. There was so much cleanup work that I um, didn't get to. And even this spring, um, I'm really not starting the amount of seeds and annual flowers um, that I have in the past for a couple of reasons. One being that um, my flower beds are pretty full now. When I started the garden five years ago, there was nothing. So annuals were an amazing way for me to fill up uh, empty space. But now I kind of have the reverse problem where I need to make new flower beds for the most part um, to be able to incorporate annuals again. The ones that I will be growing this year are zinnias, sweet peas, and cosmos. Those are three that I absolutely can't live without. And then if you followed my videos last summer, you'll remember I did start a bunch of um, foxgloves and sweet rockets, so biennials um, that I grew last year that will flower this year. And I'm going to be sowing more biennials this summer. So I have a succession every year of those beautiful flowers. And I wanted to kind of just do a, a garden walk with you and walk you around, show you what I've cleaned up so far for the spring, what I have left to do, um, things that I'm gonna be planting. I'm gonna pot up some uh, spring pots with you today, even though I'll really only get about a month left of enjoying them. But I, I, I can't share too much, but I have some incredibly exciting things to share with you guys this year. Um, so if you love cottage gardening, if you love beautiful gardens, if you love, um, I don't wanna say too much, but I have a lot of really exciting things to share with you guys this year. Um, but I wanna just kinda of take you guys around. I, I was planning on potting up for spring um, hellebores, and this is the actually the only one left I have in bloom. This one is from the wedding party. This is called Maid of Honor. And I got some other beautiful ones from that wedding party range, but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and pop them in the landscape because most of them are no longer blooming and I kind of missed my window. Again, I've been really just taking it slow and easy. Um, we have been um, honestly like sick in an almost constant succession with between our four kids, three of them in school, two different schools, um, different classrooms. We've, we've, I think we've caught about everything that you can get. We're just um, recovering from um, something which the virus, which can't be named. <laughs> um, and that, that was rough. That was really, really rough. I've still got two kiddos inside who are, who are about three and a half weeks in um, and still not doing well. One is still running fevers. Um, so it's been rough. It's been really, really rough. But I don't want to, I don't want to harp on that too much and I also don't want to gloss over um, the reality of life. I think so many of you out there um, 
know what I'm talking about. You have families or you yourself have dealt with these things. This is life. This is just life. And we, you know, the garden is, is always here waiting for us. And I love this space so much. I, have, I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed getting back out here and slowly but surely cleaning things up. We have some big plans for the next couple of years for this garden and you know just just a matter of timing and all of that and resources and, and when that that scheduling works out but i'm getting sprinkled on we have sun and we have rain we've had an intensely long winter we even had snow and hail just a few days ago um, so there's not a lot the daffodils are just now coming out and i that is my goal for this fall is to plant hundreds and hundreds more daffodils for next year. But let's get walking around. Let me show you what we've got going on in the garden right now. Okay, so here's a little stash of plants I've been picking up over the last month, and I'm gonna be uh, planting these up or putting some of them in pots with you guys over the next uh, couple of days. Um, we've got a little, a little bumblebee. The bumblebees have been out in full force. Um, and some of them are just huge. But, um, so the garden, as you can see, I have not been able to mulch anything yet because we have road restrictions for um, heavy trucks on the roads since we've had so, such a wet spring and such um, so much snow. So the roads are not open yet for me to have any deliveries of gravel or mulch or compost. Actually, we're gonna be um, mulching everything with organic compost, but, you can see kind of where we're at. The daffodils are coming up. Tulips are starting to come up. Most of my tulips in here have been chomped down by deer at least once. My multi-stem royal raindrops crab apple tree is just starting to bud up. Yeah. And then I have my bleeding hearts coming up in the back. Um, the lictrum in the back is starting to sprout. My delphiniums are starting to sprout up. Um, the roses, many of my roses, so the, there's some peonies. I have peonies everywhere coming up. Many of my roses um, have had to be cut down to the ground this year because we have had such a cold winter. The black canes are just terrible um, and I'm really making note of the roses that are doing well for me that have that have survived a really harsh winter and I'm kind of I'm kind of leaning towards um, not replacing the roses that have um, died off and replacing them with something else like this is a coco loco rose um, I gotta cut that other cane all the way down um, but I had to cut this one all the way down, uh, pretty much to the ground. And this other Coco Loco here, um, I don't think it's gonna, I don't think it's gonna come back. And since it, um, yeah, this one, those were grafted and not, uh, planted deep enough. And I knew that when I did it, um, but they lasted a couple of winters fine. And they actually looked really healthy last spring. Um, um, and then last fall, because I really couldn't do much, I wasn't able to like, lift big bags of compost or things around to mulch all um, my roses up. And I have, I have, you know, a couple hundred roses now. Um, well, not anymore, <laughs> now that a lot of them have died. Um, but so we've got, yeah, a lot of um, peonies and daffodils coming up. I love this one. I believe this one is art design. Love that one. And then uh, I've cut my, my big roses in the front back as well as some of the hydrangeas. I have yet to fertilize anything. Um, but things are starting to pop up. I was just starting to edge the lawn yesterday and weed a bunch with my kids. So I got I, I've gotten a lot of comments of people asking me if I have help in the garden, and the answer is no. I do 95% at least of everything by myself. My husband mows the lawn, but I edge it and do um, all the 
the majority of the work. Once in a while, if I have something really heavy to move or lift or dig a big hole for a tree, my husband comes and helps me. So as of yesterday, the rose meadow has been weeded. And again, we have not been able to mulch anything. I can't wait to make everything look really crisp and clean. But it has been weeded until we get to about here. And my plans for this area for this fall is to plant hundreds and hundreds of daffodils in here. Um, bulbs that the deer aren't gonna eat but that are gonna give us a lot of early spring interest. But in the fall of last year, this was all just natural grass and weeds and we did weed whack this all the way down because I want to extend the shape of this flower bed and make it look um, just more thoughtful, just more well thought out. And we need to build something to cover up this transformer. It's in a really awkward spot. I wish we could move it, um, but I'm, I'm, you know, if you have any good ideas of ways we can mask it, I thought about planting grasses around it, um, but there are rules in which, you know, how close you can get to it and how much of it you can, because um, it needs to be accessible, of course. Um, but I'm going to be, um, once we can um, get trucks up in here with compost, I'm gonna be laying this whole area. This is just uh, too much to um, try to do by hand, but covering it all with a thick layer of cardboard and then covering it with compost to do a no dig, again, um, extension to the border. And yeah, come all the way around here and swoop the bed up to kind of stop here. And then our plan going forward is, I don't think I showed you guys this tree. I planted this in the fall of last year, but a uh, shade master honey locust in the corner here. The roses that have done really well, by the way, over the winter, so my Harlow Carr roses, they're super tough and I have shared these in the past, but they're one of my favorite roses for the landscape. They're not, they're not a cut flower, but they are gorgeous. And I want to add even more of these in the future and a new border that I'm gonna be creating. But I kind of wanted to show you if you, can, if you can envision this with me. So from about here to here, I want to have a, an arbor and I want to create some sort of hedge. Either we'll continue that fence all the way around or I will create some sort of hedge with maybe like European hornbeams or I am going to be planting more Everest crabapple trees along this side of the yard but we need a privacy uh, hedge and we also need a windbreak but I want to uh, plant some sort of or place some sort of arbor here with roses and clematis growing over it and then to connect our upper lawn with the lawn in the back um, and right now there's only steps going down so bringing the lawnmower around we have to go this way anyway, but I want to have a very wide uh, grass pathway, uh, grass lawn that comes around like basically like the width of a single lane um, of a road, but I'm going to have to have this all graded to be a nice smooth road. So if you can kind of see what I mean, so there'll be an arbor and then there'll be this road that comes around and we're going to scrape off the whole side of this slope, and I'm gonna be turning this into a huge, uh, very hopefully deer resistant border. I already have drip stubbed out here so I can have, I can irrigate it, but then this would all be planted with grass all the way along the rim of this terraced level. And I want to someday add some sort of tunnel um, with either crab apples growing over it or some tree trained over it uh, uh, to be like this beautiful multi-seasonal interest. But I'm gonna plant up this, so you, this is a huge area, so this is gonna require thousands of plants. Um, and then our septic drain field is here, which once everything is graded, we'll cut these caps down um, to ground level and then I'll spray paint them green so they'll kind of disappear. But again, we want to have another arbor here connecting uh, with more uh, climbing roses over it. Um, 
and then it's going to someday we want to have a third so we have our upper terrace our second terrace that we put in two years ago and then we want to have a third terrace which connects um, to a lower terrace here where we're going to someday build a, a guest house or an accessory dwelling unit and have a huge fenced in a uh, vegetable garden. Um, I did buy a cedar greenhouse from Costco um, that we need to, to grade a pad for so we can put together. That was another reason why I didn't start a lot of seeds was because um, it's just a lot to have them all in the house. And I thought, you know, I'm, I'm okay with waiting to start a bunch of seeds again until next year when we have the greenhouse set up and I can have everything I can just have everything outside for the most part. But just yesterday I came through here and just did the initial cut back and clean up of the terrace and uh, cutting back of the roses. The own root tea clipper roses I have, um, have done okay this winter, but the bare root that I planted last year from directly from David Austin does not look so so good and again that one didn't get planted deep enough um, either but honestly even all of my grafted roses that were planted you know two or three inches below the soil uh, had a really rough had a really rough winter as one well, and I and I had to cut many of them all the way back um, this was a Francis Mayan rose which I'm gonna need to pull out it didn't make it um, the uh, mill on the floss rose, I have a little bit more to cut back, but it's okay. And then my um, wild eve roses that were en route look, look good, as well as the generous gardener. And the other wild eve roses over here, I had to cut back more, but they are grown, there is new growth, so they will survive. I just need to, I need to fertilize everything. Um, and I need to, clean off the steps. We're gonna see if the Origeron daisies I planted all the way down the stairs made it. Um, but I have, I have to look up the name of these that I planted here last year, but they're growing back. And then the Sweet Rocket that I started from seed that are biennial are um, flushing out and they will flower this year. And then there's more, they'll just kind of continue to spread. And then this, grassy hillside. I'm going to want to do the same thing where um, we scrape it off or just mow it really short, lay the lay the cardboard and compost down and make this um, a woodland area. I have bulbs coming up over here. You can see like in I planted in the grass daffodils and tulips and snowdrops and they are here so I don't want to I don't want to lose those but I might dig them up for when we um, for when I create this I'm gonna have this this little border be full of of ferns and woodland plants that are really deer resistant and tough and before I ran out of steam yesterday I started to clean out this border now I don't think you guys saw what I did over here. So I always planned on having some sort of structure here, but then um, I had gathered some plants and I just really wanted to get them in the ground. And I put in a little lily pond, which is um, only partially done because I need more rocks to, and I'll level them off to go around the pond. I need to clean out the pond and um, it does not look good right now, but the some of the lily pads are starting to push new growth. But I came out here and planted some bulbs and some peonies and I'm going to be planting more peonies down here this fall and I pl planted um, a standard, I believe this is a vanilla strawberry, yep, a vanilla strawberry hyd hydrangea standard and then I planted these two vanilla strawberry hydrangeas and these two crab apple trees which um, I tried to cage but we had a moose come through <laughs> and, and eat off of them, but they're okay. They were little whips to begin with that came um, through the mail. They were not from a local nursery. So these are pretty tiny. And I've said in the past, I only wanna plant bigger trees. And 
I wasn't able to find these locally last year and I've actually seen them locally this spring. So I'm a, but it's okay. It's okay, they'll just keep growing. But this one is a harvest gold crab apple. Actually, I don't think I've seen the harvest gold. Um, and then this one is a sugar thyme crab apple. And then I've still got my, my uh, pop-up bag and I'm still, this was in, in the midst of being cleaned up last night. Um, and then this one, of course, was from Christensen's Nursery, and I planted this with you guys last year, but this is a snowdrift crab apple tree, which is budding out. And so we've had the deer continually munching on some of the ends. Um, and I just came and actually uh, clipped it back so it didn't have these rough ends, but they're coming by and, and chewing on the ends. That's why I like to get, bigger trees because if the canopy, the canopy is tall enough, the deer can't really get to it. And I know, you know, in the fall, the bucks will rut and they'll rub their antlers on the trunks and kill the trees. I haven't had a problem with deers rutting on any of my trees. It's just them eating the ends. And so many nursery folk will tell me, oh no, the deer don't really eat those. Those, um, they don't typically nibble on those trees, but they nibble on everything in my garden. Everything, it doesn't, anything, the boxwoods, again, like these, I almost ripped these out last year, these little tiny boxwoods, these are the, oh shoot, these are the proven winners boxwoods, uh, sprinter boxwoods. And I left them in and they did green up and they looked okay, um, but the deer, they're, since they're the, the only green thing popping out of the snow, my deer eat boxwood. So these are all burned because <laughs> the deer had been basically pruning them and then we'd have all these um, freezes and they would burn. So I, uh, over the winter, our snow was so heavy and we are gonna be um, getting a bunch of gravel in this, this um, spring when the roads open, but I took out the arches and I'm going to be, We've just had oregano seed itself like crazy and the sweet rocket seed itself like crazy in here. And I want to actually dig these up as many, look at all these babies, dig as many of them up as possible before I get new gravel in here and try to transplant plant them into the prairie border so um, they can flower and spread out there. But there's some mullein that seeded itself. But I mean, it's everywhere, the oregano and the sweet rocket and chamomile are everywhere, but the arches are gone because they collapsed. They lasted me three years um, and did really well. These are tulips I planted two years ago that are coming back up, so we'll see how well they flower. But I have vines and clematis, and um, like this Montana Rubens clematis was completely smothering the arch that was here, and it looked gl glorious. However, the arch collapsed, so I had to cut it back like this and I'm going to be building with you guys new arches and so many of you have asked me how I built them and I'm going to be building them differently. Um, I'm planning and it could change based on um, practicality but I'm planning on only using natural materials so no t-bar uh, or t-posts, no, um, no, no kind of uh, wire paneling or mesh. Um, is my plan, but I'm gonna be building those with you on camera. I'm gonna be showing you uh, the wood that I source, the, the uh, branches that I source rather, and how I'm planning to put this, these new arches together. And then I'm gonna be planting up them up with these sweet peas, which I need to water. Um, but most of these are a variety called Juliet that I'm very excited to be trialing that came from the UK, which are not available from any sources that I know of to order into the US, but I do have a friend in the UK who very kindly mailed some to me. So that's how I got those. But again, so many of my roses um, just did not fare very well and I gave them an, an initial cut back, but they need to be cut back even more um, and some need to be pulled. So I'm, you know, it's very, uh, this is just a lot of loss, a lot of loss. And I'm gonna be thinking really hard about how I wanna move forward. There's a lot of yarrow and gera hardy geranium that have spread around these borders here 
that I actually want to dig up and move to the rose meadow and then um, plant uh, other things in these areas. And I need to dig out like the yarrow that's now seeding itself around this vanilla strawberry hydrangea. And yeah, keep it from taking over. The yarrow is very, very aggressive. But I have the beautiful Souvenir de Andre Nepeta, that tall, beautiful catmint uh, Nepeta that is growing back and spreading itself around, which I am very happy for it to do. And then the sweet woodruff I have over here is also has been spreading. It's actually spreading into the gravel, which one of our big plans for um, the spring, we've, been, we've had about four contractors out to give us quotes to um, replace the steps. And I wanted, ideally wanted steps that have coping on them and then lay a natural stone or paver patio here. So this will have a huge makeover. And then as well as in the front yard, another makeover where we replace our front landing and replace the awning, this black steel awning that is, uh, or black metal awning, I don't know if it's steel, um, that is over our front door here. And we are going to replace this. My dad actually, who built our house, oh, we got the mail, um, is going to be building a gable roof uh, covering over a, a bigger landing and then have new steps coming down. I wanted if I can, if I can have it, I want coping on those steps as well. I want to have a big chunky um, uh, gable covering over and we're going to be replacing the front door and then having a paver or natural stone curved walkway put in here and, and uh, replace the gravel and things that are here with something more permanent and something a little just cleaned up, but still that feels very cottagey, that feels um, like an English country garden, which is the style that I love. I don't want anything modern or um, something that's not gonna age very well. But yeah, those are the, those are the main things that um, we are gonna be trying to accomplish this year. Here is my, the boxes for my greenhouse. And I still need to have this pine tree removed and then we can continue this border up on the side of the driveway. But that is what we've got going on. Okay, so I have gone ahead and emptied out the soil from last fall about halfway down the container and topped it up with fresh potting compost. Now, I didn't find it necessary to take all the soil out because these, most of these plants will only be here for about a month. We've got a bumblebee sleeping on this ivy right below me. Don't be angry at me. Um, and I had a bunch of daffodils and narcissus and things here um, that I was planning on potting. I am still gonna plant the tete-a-tete. -tete. Um, I just deadhead it a little bit, but there's not much life left in them. There's certainly the minnow uh, narcissus that I had up here. I'll just gonna be popping in the landscape uh, to come up as a perennial in future years. But um, a lot of this stuff has been sitting here waiting for me to film this video for a few weeks. So um, I'm gonna kind of deadhead everything, freshen it up and let let what can and will push fresh growth do that. Now I have ivy, which I planted last year, and I loved that so much that I'm gonna keep doing that because the ivy is something that can stay in the containers from spring through autumn. It did not um, overwinter for me, of course, but it's a beautiful, um, and it just, uh, green, and it just fills out through the season. And I, I think it's, it's, seasonless and that it looks beautiful in spring, summer, and fall and it fits in, in every season. So um, another, I, because these are only going to be here for about a month before I switch over to summer planting, I'm mostly going to plant them up with these little violas um, and pansies because they will just keep flowering their heads off and they're a very inexpensive way to add some spring color. So I just want to add a little pop of color to the front steps for the next month before I switch over and that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I'm going to try to move this ivy over here. I have another one. So 
so maybe I'll just swap that IV over here, which this, it does need to be cleaned up a little bit. But it's, it's, it's it had some frostbite, um, but it's pushing new growth already. So I'll come in here with some snips and trim this up um, so that it looks the best that it can look. But I'm gonna start off with that IV. And I'm not adding any fertilizer into the soil because again, these are only gonna be, most of these plants are only gonna be here for a month. And get all that nice fluffy compost around in there. And then I have this beautiful Nemesia and this color, it almost looks like the color of amazing gray poppies. This one is called Essential Blackberry and not really super fragrant, but just a beautiful color. And so these grow eight to 12 inches tall and they are sadly only an annual, but a really pretty one. that definitely in the front. And then I'm going to kind of contrast that with um, these little white, penny white violas. And I don't I don't find it necessary for um, containers to like perfectly match. I'm gonna add in some of this white alyssum. Alyssum is, um, I don't know if I've said this before, but it has this wonderful honey, very floral fragrant scent. And this is one of the, the flowers that um, is so nostalgic for me. My mom always, always had alyssum in her containers growing up and so that smell just brings me right back to my childhood you know how scent can do that for us and that is one of my childhood um, that smells that just brings out so many vivid memories like I could almost be back in that in that season of my life just um, smelling Alyssum so I'm gonna place probably three of those around, but I'll do the third one next. And then I'm gonna add, um, I think what I'm gonna add for some height. So these are primroses. It's a candelabra sort of kind of type primula. And so this doesn't look so hot right now, but it's pushing a bunch of fresh um, blooms. So it's, it is this lovely, when they come out, like, oh, well, that one deadheaded. Um, this was pushing new flowers, but it's a periwinkle color. I'm not, I'm not gonna stress about that. I'm just gonna deadhead it and uh, let it refresh once it gets in its container. Um, now it says on here, this came from Lowe's and it says it is an annual. Um, however, primroses are um, incredibly perennial in my experience and they don't even say um, the zones on here that I can see. Um, but I'll probably still just pop this in the landscape afterwards because primroses are typically perennial for me, um, uh, no matter the, the variety. But I'm gonna get this in here and then I'm going to, I'm going to clean, clean it up with some little snips or with my fingers. See if I can get her smushed down in there. without crushing everything else. <laughs> yep, and then I'm gonna fill in the edge. I'm gonna do, actually, so I'm gonna do another, I'm gonna do another do another alyssum in the corner here and then I'm going to do 
some of this uh, sorbet pink wing, some of these violas in the corner. And you can really pack out these spring containers because you're not gonna get that much growth out of them before um, popping them over. The violas really do fizzle out when it starts to get too hot. So I'm gonna go through and just deadhead clean up this primrose. Okay, so then I have this lime um, planter here and I might either fill it with all of these little um, pale yellow violas or for contrast. I think I'm gonna go with the contrast and do the sorbet wing. Just pack it out with the sorbet wing violas. So simple, inexpensive, but beautiful. Yeah, and I have a lot of these, so I can easily pack this out. And since I don't have a lot of time for these to fill in, that's why it's essential to add in. I could have probably started some spring containers a month ago, but our spring has just been so tricky that we really, it really feels like we have just two seasons now. It feels like we have this very long winter and then we have a hot summer. And, you know, as gardeners, we're really having to adapt um, with all these different challenges being thrown at us from the weather. And these will kind of bulk up and fill up and just be a really soft, mm, romantic little mound of violas. Okay, so those are all packed out in there. Those will, those will fill up or fill in, and I have an extra one here that I can fit in this container. There we go. Okay, so got those ones done. And then I'm gonna pack out this, um, going to pack out this container with the rose. And again, I've got the tete -a tete in here and I'm going to deadhead some of these that have gone over. And this, this isn't gonna give me much time left and I can replace it with something and plant these in the landscape for the leaves to yellow off. Okay, so my battery died, but I've got the tete-a-tete -tete daffodils uh, popped in there. And then I'm gonna plant for a nice pop of white these, um, Candy Tuft, Purity Candy Tuft, and these are Hardy to Zone 3, uh, Hardy from Zones 3 to 8. So these are, of course, very perennial for me, so I can pop, pop these out and place them somewhere um, in the landscape when these, uh, when the spring container is done, or I could even leave them in uh, for some summer color. And then I'm going to plant, these are Sorbet Icy Violas, so a little bit different uh, to the uh, sorbet wing uh, violas, but this is a nice mid-lavender tone of viola. And get those in there. And then I'm behind it, I'm going to tuck in some Um, white alyssum in the gap. So I think I'm gonna add in a bunch of these pale yellow violas. Um, this is another 
true blue pansy. I planted these last year and I just loved that real mid blue. Anytime I can get like real blue in the garden, I'm happy. I'm just gonna pack it out with the rest of these yellow and then save the other pack for the other side. And we're just gonna go viola crazy. So since I do not have another tete-a-tete, -tete, um, I'm going to use the primrose as a filler, or as a thriller rather, for uh, this big ceramic pot here. And then I'm going to use, well, this has a bunch of new buds coming up, so don't, don't worry as I am deadheading this uh, primrose. But I'm going to add this here to the pot in this back corner. It looks like your front corner, but it's actually the back corner. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add in my candy tuft. And I actually have two of them. So I'm gonna do one here next to the primrose. And I'm gonna do another one over in this corner. And then the Sorbet Icy Violas, which I added to the other large ceramic pot. And I'm gonna put these here. And I'm gonna start adding in some alyssum, which this one is from a different throw. And these are looking a little bit dry, but they will be much happier once they are planted. I'm just gonna pop these wherever there is a gap. And then I'm gonna fill in with the True blue pansies. I might do those, these in the middle here. And then I'm gonna fill in the rest of the space with these lovely pale yellow violas. And these ones were like $3 for the flat, $2.99, something like that. Picked it up at a local grocery store. I, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I buy flowers everywhere. Um, I have my favorite local nurseries and I shop there first. But I'm always looking for flowers. So if I see like a great color of something or something that I know is unique or I think is special, I will, um, I'm always looking for plants. And I found some great things at, a, at grocery stores. So if you do not have any really wonderful local nurseries around you, don't fret. There's always online shopping and there are uh, markets or farmer's markets, just always be on the lookout or just like swapping plants with other local gardeners, getting involved in a gardening group. I'm just gonna try to pack these out. Okay, again, so I'm gonna start off with this Hans Ivy. Mr. Bumblebee has moved on. And I'm gonna pop him in the corner. Giving myself a nice lip so that I have plenty of room to water. And then I'm gonna tuck in the Ballerina Cream Primrose. So this is the Nemesia that I slightly ran over with my car. So I actually went up and picked out a second one. It's, 
it's um, half of it <laughs> was killed off, but I'm gonna pop two really close together and it'll look fine. It'll just give us a little more impact from the Nemesia. It looks like I have a little bit of frost damage on this one, which I will uh, clean off. Yeah, want a lot of that Nemesia in this one. And then I'm going to add in these white penny violas in the middle to break that color. And another one, I think, just underneath the ivy. So I'm gonna add in some of these sorbet wing violas wherever I find a gap. the last sorbet wing in the front. Okay. And I'm gonna top up with a little bit more soil. simple, fairly easy to find and inexpensive uh, annuals and perennials for these short-lived spring containers. And yeah, I think that those will fill in really nice over the next month and just bring me just some little pop of happiness by the front door. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap it up. I wanted to clean up the lower terrace with you guys but it is starting to rain. And so that is a Pacific Northwest spring, sun, wind, rain, hail, snow, all in one day. Um, but I'm gonna save this cleanup for next time as well as planting some of those spring perennials, hellebores, and a bunch of other goodies that I picked up, as well as moving some perennials. Early spring is a perfect time to move perennials, herbaceous perennials, if you have any in your garden that you would like to move. I have my husband who just took off to a movie with the three older kids and my little one is home feeling not well. So I'm gonna wrap this up and go take care of her. I hope you guys are so well. Happy gardening, I'll see you next time, bye.